Now, last week on the Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, we did Charles Wesley, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. And we had mentioned another hymn in the book I have right next to it. Christ Jesus is Risen Today. And we have two different hymns under the same music. Two different authors, two different times. And the one today we're going to look at, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, is Latin of the history we don't know much from, but it's traditionally a Catholic hymn. And it's looking at the resurrection. Now, we've got some problems with this one, and we had some problems with the other one. Now, remember when Charles Wesley wrote, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and you see, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And you look at Christ, uh, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We've already studied last time and get uh, the video or the audio, however you watch and listen to these. That, for Charles Wesley, that Alleluia was added by someone we don't know who. We're going to take the first stanza of Charles Wesley. This is what Charles Wesley wrote for the first stanza. Christ the Lord is risen today. Sons of men and angels say, Rise your joys and triumph high. Sing ye heavens and earthly reply. Remove out of those stanzas the hallelujah, hallelujah, excuse me, and that's what Charles Wesley wrote. Someone came along later on and added them hallelujah. Now, you remember correctly from last time, we learned Alleluia, and when we're looking at today's hymn as a Catholic hymn, during the 40 years, of 40 years, 40 days of Lent, from that time, you are not allowed to say the word Alleluia. Now, there's all these stupid traditions and, and, and putting upon people, works and attitudes, do nots and do's and just trying to be God in the Old Testament. So you weren't allowed to say hallelujah for 40 days, but on Easter, and that's an important word that we're going to look at again as we looked at last week, Easter, you're allowed now to say hallelujah for Christ is risen. Christ did not rise from the grave on Easter. He arose from the grave three days and three nights according to scriptures after the Passover, and that was not Easter. Easter is a pagan Roman holiday called Estar. And it has nothing and will have nothing to do with the Bible-believing, born-again believing Christian. It belongs for the worldly pagans, it belongs for the worldly Christians, but it doesn't belong to the one that studies the Bible. And the tune for both of these, sorry for Charles Wesley, and we're the one we're going to do today. The music of the score is called, let me get it right now, let me get it right. Make sure you don't want me to do anything wrong. It's called the Easter Hymn. So the music for these two, what we looked at last week and for today. Everyone open up here to Jesus Christ is risen today or rise up to Christ the Lord is risen today. We're going to sing it to the music of Easter hymn in a Bible-believing church. That's Conorize. That's paganism. And we got a Bible-believing church and you're singing Easter when it has nothing to do with Christianity at all. And I'm talking about the biblical blood-bought new birth Christianity. I'm not talking about that, you know, give us, you know, wet our diapers and take care of us and give us candy and give us all kinds of love and flowers and tulips and, and all kinds of Easter bunnies and Santa Claus and all that. That's the Easter hymn. I told you, when we did Christ the Lord is Risen Today, i divide that right in half, get rid of the hallelujahs, and I would change the music. I would find somebody who, who can write music and say, hey, listen, we got to get rid of the Easter hymn and we got to put a Christ hymn. Because Christ and Easter are not together. Christ is a man. Esther is a woman. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Esther is dead. Christ suffered once and for all. Esther has many boobies. Your Easter pagan religion has boobies. Look at, go look in Google her search of what her idolatry uh, image looks like or her 
uh, statue. She's referenced with chocolate. She's referenced with eggs and Easter, not Jesus Christ. So, again, and the Catholics call this a beautiful hymn. In a way, it is. Get rid of the Alleluia. Now, let's look what the Bible says about Alleluia. And we looked at this last time. Revelation chapter 19, verse 2. For true and righteous are his judgments, God. For he has judged a great whore. Biblically sound looking, that's the Catholic Church. Which did corrupt the whole earth with her with her fornication, Catholic Church, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. She kills Christians. She tortures Christians. She's killed and started wars with God's people, the Jews. And again, they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty-four elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God. At the that sat on the throne and saying, Amen, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and a voice of many waters, and as a voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. You know what the Alleluia is? That's the only place it shows up in the Bible. From Revelation 19.1 all the way down to Revelation 19.6. And you know what that Alleluia is kind of funny? It's about the great whore that God's judged and condemned and overthrew and never going to come back again. And yet that same church says, oh, we just love singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And they don't even know what Alleluia means in the Bible. Hallelujah means your church is going to fall and decay and be judged by God Almighty. Now that's a hallelujah. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Christ Jesus is risen today. And we're going to run, kind of run back and forth. Christ the Lord is risen today. Now one thing with Charles Wesley is... His doesn't have Jesus. He has Christ. Kind of hard to find Jesus' name in the hymns I have seen in these studies. A name that's above all names. And no, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And many of these hymns are missing J-E-S-U-S, -S, which means Jehovah saves. I find that remarkable. That the name of Jesus is removed from his. Okay? Today they put Jesus Christ is risen today. So Jesus Christ is risen today. I ain't going to do the hallelujahs again. Because it's out of context. The context for both these and any hymns that have hallelujah. If it's not in the context of the great whore fallen. And the great whore of that city. That great whore religion being judged by God Almighty. Then there is no of hallelujah. That'll be when God judges that whore and finds her never to come back to life again. Imagine singing in your church about a church that God's going to judge at fault. Boy, you don't know your Bible. Jesus Christ is risen today. And it's talking about the resurrection. In tune to, what do we say? In tune to what? The Easter hymn. So with the tune of the Easter, Christ Jesus risen today. So what's the song? Easter. It is not on Easter. Easter is pagan. Easter is never Bible. And when Easter is the only time mentioned in the Bible, it is the Roman government saying that is our holiday. And for the Jewish holiday, they have the Passover. If you think that Easter is Christianity of the Bible and of God, you will be found wood, hay, or stubble, or a liar before God. So again, I would chop this hymn in half, get rid of hallelujahs. Because I think the words are great. 
And I would find somebody who can write music and say, hey, you gotta get rid of that, you gotta get rid of that Easter hen part. Let's find a greater one. Let's get some trumpets. Let's get some trumpets involved with these two hymns. Let's try to find somewhere where Christ the Lord is risen. Let's find somewhere where we can put Jesus. So Jesus Christ is risen today, not on Easter. Three days and three nights after the Passover, not on Good Friday. Our triumph holy day. Yeah, I mean, the, the gospel is in three parts. The death, burial, and resurrection. And the resurrection fulfills our salvation. Paul writes, he says, if Christ not arose, if there was no resurrection, our religion is vain, and let's go eat and be drink and be merry. If Christ is still dead, then we're all going to go to hell. So it is a holy day. But it's not Easter day. I celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ every day. Because that is the salvation. When a man comes to Calvary and gets on his knees and repents of his sin and trusts fully upon Jesus Christ and enters into that tomb where he lay, according to the scriptures, and when he comes out of that tomb, a believer, a child of God, he is a Christian by the death, by the burial, and by the resurrection. But it's not Easter. Who did once upon the cross suffer to redeem our loss? More than our loss. Our sins. I would have to undo that rhyme of cross and loss and add a little more oomph. Add a little more our sins, our souls. Hymns of praise then to us sing. Churches today don't say hymns, they say music. We're going to do some music for the Lord now. We're going to sing a song. Unto Christ, our heavenly king. He's not our king. Jesus Christ is our, is our groom. He is our savior. He is our God. He is our Lord. He is not king of the church. He is king of the Jews. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, in the millennium, he's king of the Jews, and we will be kings, those that have the office to fit, that his reign with Christ through sufferings with Christ. But still, the kingly ship and author of the title of king and reigning is over the children of Israel, not the church. Who endured the cross and grave, a little weak endured, but yeah, okay. Suffered on the cross. Sinners to redeem and save. Oh, glory. He came on to he came in this world to save the lost. But the pains which he endured, torment pains, our salvation has procured. Now above the sky he is king. King of all the earth, King of the Jews, will be one day seated on the throne, right at the right hand of the Father. He's not king right now. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's not seated upon David's throne. He will one day. At that moment, at the second advent, when he's got those crowns, he comes on the white horse and he picks up the nation of Israel and brings them into their land and he seats himself on David's throne. Then he becomes king. And then that king goes for all eternity. Right now, he's a mediator. He Now he goes up to the father and says, Father, he says, uh, that's one of ours. That's one of your sons. It's under the blood, or it's not under the blood. And the Holy Spirit says, this is what he needs in his life. He's praying for this, but this is what he really needs. When the angels ever sing, they don't sing now. Singing for angels and all will be later on. There is no singing in heaven today. Singing will break forth when they break out the song of Moses in the book of Revelation. 
Angels don't sing now. You got to get the Bible, man. Stop believing in those Sunday school teachers so, uh, stories so the kiddies will be all amused and so happy. Make sure you put your candy wrappers in the garbage now. Sing we to our God above. Okay. Praise eternal as his love. Praise him, all ye heavenly hosts, everything. That everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And Psalms. It's toward the close of Psalms 150. It says, let, let the moon praise him. Let the earth praise And this entire list. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise you all, Heavenly Host, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, some people have problem with that. Some people have problem with the Trinity. I don't. So, I would get rid of the Easter hymn music. I would get rid of all the hallelujahs. And Jesus Christ is risen today. It, it, it's watered down. It needs some more gospel flavor of the true sufferings and agony of Jesus Christ and for the great wellness of his salvation to mankind. It needs own. Both of these hymns that we've done last week, Christ the Lord is risen today, Jesus Christ is risen today, it needs trumpets. It needs excitement. And not to the flesh, but to the Spirit to lift ourselves up to the Lord. I would even go so far as to say is combine the two and make eight stanzas and remove the hallelujahs and remove the Easter hymn and let's just give God the glory and honor and, and love dedicated to him, dedicated to the one that suffered and died according to Scripture and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Put these two together and let's exalt Jesus and not a church. And when you as a church are singing Alleluia, you're singing to the Bible says to the damnation and condemnation of the failure of your church. That's kind of remarkable. That's a monkey wrench. And I think, like I said, Charles Wesley did not write that in his. Somebody wrote it. Somebody wanted these two hymns together, and they're totally different. But they're so much the same, I think let's make them all one hymn. But we don't know who wrote Jesus Christ is written, Risen Today. Again, that's in the Latin. Oh, by the way, in Bert, stanza four of Jesus Christ is Risen Today. That is written by Charles Wesley. I forgot to mention that. Charles Wesley gave us stanza four. One, two, and three are we don't know who. So glory to God that Charles Wesley is already attached to both of these. Let's attach them both together. Again, I know you probably stopped saying it. Remove the Easter hymn music and remove that hallelujahs and I would put them together in the hymnal. 